In this video, we're going to continue with the topic of raising up leaders. Check your heart attitude. If you haven't seen the, the last video, I would suggest that you go back and watch that first and then come to what I have to say today. The last time I said it's very important that we have a heart attitude that raises up leaders, that wants to raise up leaders. It's not about your grey hair or about your age. It's about whether you want to or whether you don't want to. Your heart attitude. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 2, what you've heard from me, you shall also pass on to people who are trustworthy and capable of teaching others. And here we see trustworthy. Trustworthy has got nothing to do with age. It's about a heart attitude. Where do I find these people that are trustworthy? People who are able to take what they have heard and learned and can pass it on, and that's very important. I find a second point that is very important for us. It's not just about seeing the potential in others, but it's also about having a focus with this topic of raising up leaders. We have many people in our church who are continually looking after those with needs, and that's good, and I do this as well. But we need to recognize that the needs of the people and these meeting these needs are not our only task. We have many other tasks, and if we're only focusing on this, we will always be responding to the urgence, and we'll never come to the point where we have something that is important where we can inv invest our time as well and that is raising up leaders and that's why it's so important for you and for me that we look at this point of having focus that when we lead many people that our focus of our life is making disciples in investing into others Mostly we won't see short-term results and that's often the problem. We spend time with people and we're investing time in their lives and at that moment you're not going to see a change straight away. Maybe in the next few weeks and then you're lucky, but mostly it's a longer process. And that's why we also don't always see what is going to come out of our chats, maybe later on, but if we don't invest now, we may continue for a month or a year, but after that, if we haven't invested, we won't have anyone who is coming up behind us and, and is ready to lead because we haven't invested in potential. Focus is so important. And another point is, that is very important from my own experience, that you are relationally and emotionally secure. Everyone who has a constant vision is secure, a, a vision that isn't shaky, that is someone who is secure. Someone who is able to work with a team over many years is someone who is relationally and emotionally secure because in your team and in your surrounding there will always be people that are stronger than you. Maybe they are more educated than you in certain areas. And you see that they are stronger than you in certain areas. And the question is, if you are emotionally secure, you will respond with joy when you see the performance. But if you are insecure, you may respond with maybe a bit of jealousy and you, you don't joy in people's successes. So how is this with you? It's very important for us. If we are emotionally and relationally insecure, we will never confront because we want people to think that we're good, that, that we're kind and nice. But we will never raise up leaders this way because we need those deep relationships, but we need to be able to hold people accountable to help them. And so you need to have a secure emotional and relational um, heart 
If you are insecure, it's like you just don't have place for other ways of thinking. We always want people that are the same as us. We, we pick people like ourselves. We don't want to be threatened. We need people who are around us that are different, that have different ideas, that challenge us in different areas. And it's so important for us. We can only do that if within ourselves we are secure. And then the next point, we need to be authentic and genuine. People want to be with us. People, people are drawn to us when we are authentic and genuine. And that's what we want to say. We want to live that. Not that we preach one thing, but we're not prepared to do it ourselves. If we are prepared to do all that we actually say, then we have in the eyes of others that authentic and genuine um, reputation and then willingness to put yourself out there and take a risk so it's not just about training but releasing putting bringing people into your team so that they, yeah that they can grow in your team and maybe then be released We've taken people from our eldership team and then released them to lead other churches and it, it hurts but it gave us a lot of joy to see how God's kingdom is being expanded. How is it with you? Are you prepared to do that? Someone once said, the quality of leadership directly affects the quality and excellence with which an organization or business or non-profit can provide its end products or services. I want to say, church is not far away from this. We are family. We need fathers who care and raise up others. And if this has a quality, if our leadership has a quality, then we have an excellent chance of of leaders that will continue. And so the last question now. If you had a look at these points, so it's important that you have an answer to these questions. It's not about just listening, but you need to take time. It's important to take time and say, how much focus do I have in my life? How much focus have I spent on raising up leaders? Am I emotionally and relationally secure? Am I prepared to take further steps? Am I authentic and gen genuine? Or am I willing to take risks? With everyone who qualifies in leadership, bring these questions to God and ask Him to change your heart.